Hey everybody! So in this video, I'm going to show you the most basic way to make your very own monitor bezel from a black piece of essentially like poster board or construction paper. I mean, it's poster board, but whatever. So it's going to start from this as the raw form where you have just nothing. It's just a black poster board and it's going to turn into that right there. It's extremely easy to do. You can use these methods not only if you decide to convert one of your arcades from a CRT to an LCD monitor, but if you happen to get an arcade game that just doesn't have one of these monitor bezels, you can make your very own. You don't have to spend a bunch of money and get an actual plastic one or anything like that. Just make one, okay? I can't. Alrighty. So as you already saw, we're going to go ahead and show you guys in this video how to make your own monitor bezel from scratch. Uh, you saw the before and the after just a few moments ago. So now let's go ahead and start going through the step-by-steps, alright? This is for my heavy barrel arcade that we already converted to a flat screen monitor. Now, there are a few things you need to do before you start throwing your poster board in. And you need to make some measurements, alright? Now, the poster board I have, the height, right, you know, from the top to the bottom here, is actually perfectly fine. It's a little bit of a gap between the top and bottom, but in all reality, it's not going to affect it. Especially you get when you get the, like, the bezel artwork, or the, uh, the glass over it that has the artwork on it because it's going to take away those little gaps you have. If you want to be super anal about it, you can get two poster boards and, you know, combine them together. But really, it doesn't matter. Um, so, with that being said, the height is fine. I need to get the width. Alright? So you need to make a measurement of your width. And each cabinet is going to be slightly different. Like with my cabinet here, when you look at this, if you were to measure it from the edge here to the edge here, it's going to be way too wide, okay? And the reason being is, you see this piece of black wood compared to this white piece of wood? That gap is a three-quarter inch, and it actually goes on the inside. You're not going to be able to see it very well, but this piece of wood right here is this edge you see right here and the same with this side okay so we're at an inch and a half right there off the bat now just to make it easier take your tape measure if if your game is the same way as mine okay and you're gonna measure from this white edge that you know matches up with the black edge over to this white edge that matches up with the black edge, okay? And that's going to be the width you want. Now, you want to add an inch on each side. So basically, let's just say that this point to this point is 22 inches, which it actually is. We're going to add 2 inches. So you want to cut it at a width of 24 inches. So you can fold over and have something to staple or nail or double side tape to the edge okay so you want it a little wider so you can fold it on the sides and attach it to the side or even potentially top of the machine it depends on what your overall heights and widths are going to be uh, now there are going to be some machines that you can literally just measure from here to here and it's going to be perfectly fine this particular one it doesn't all right so we've already measured this and like i said before this is 22 inches all right so i'm going to cut my poster board to 24 inches wide and fold over a one inch flap so i have something to attach the board to on the side here and again you can use nails staples or double-sided tape it doesn't really matter ultimately as long as it holds it in place in general okay so let's run over to the piece of 
paper that I have set up and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so we'll be right back. Okay, so now you understand what we have to do with the measurements. You can see I've already measured the width of this poster board, okay? And folded these flaps over. These flaps are folded over at a one inch, okay? So the gap from here all the way to here is what we need for our monitor, like, total enclosure, okay? So, at this point, you want to take your poster board that you have your, like, connection flaps, we'll call them, set up, and you need to put it in the machine for the next step, alright? So, let's go ahead and move this over to the game, and I'll show you what I mean by the next basic step, alright? Here we go. Okay, so we're back at the game. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this piece of poster board in. I apologize for the camera and stuff. I don't have this on a tripod, so I'm trying to do this all one-handed. you got to do a little manipulating just to get the poster board in there. Okay, there we go. So our poster board's in place. Everything seems to be good to go. Now, the next step is we need to do some very basic markings and measurements so that we can cut out the general screen size. And I'm going to be honest with you. You don't have to be perfect with this, okay? Because with the uh, video converter board and most arcade game boards, you can adjust the width and the vertical sizes of the screen itself. So if you're a little bit over on what you need, you can make adjustments to still make it fit within your uh, monitor bezel, okay? So let's go to the back side real quick. So we'll slip on over here. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'll tell you straight up the bat. I have already marked this monitor, okay? But as you can see, the way the monitor is sitting, and yes, by the way, I haven't painted these support boards yet. I'm going to do that eventually, just not right now. But what we do, we have the, uh, the monitor bezel, cardboard piece, poster board, whatever you want to call it, in place. And at this point, you're going to use somebody else's help, which I've already used because, you know, they had to leave, so I didn't have time to film that part. But they're going to put their hands on the top and the bottom of the screen, on the other side of where we're sitting, so it's nice and flush with the monitor. You're going to take your marker, and you're going to mark the top, both sides, and the bottom for where we have the monitor placed, okay? And that's going to give you your outline of your entire monitor. So that's the very first and actually one of the most important steps, especially if your monitor is already mounted like we have it right here. I could take this monitor out and put it on that poster board and make marks, but it doesn't mean it's going to be perfectly centered the way I have it mounted. That's the key. Mount your monitor and then mark the exterior of the monitor. And then we'll go to step two, okay? So let's run over to step two, and we'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have the bezel removed from here, we've already marked our outside diameters, or perimeters, what do you want to say, of our physical monitor, okay? Now, the next step is to measure the width of this bezel that's mounted on the monitor itself. Now you still have to do this even if you get an arcade monitor that doesn't have this plastic bezel around it because you're going to have a metal frame that goes around the entire monitor and you really don't want that metal frame in your you know viewpoints. So at this point you want to measure the width, the widest width of this point, the top, bottom, and left. Okay, I mean, right, whatever. Can't think straight today. I've already measured these. The side, the left side, the right side, the top and bottom are all five-eighths of an inch. Okay, so this plastic's width 
is 5 eighths of an inch. Same with all sides all the way around the monitor. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because some monitors, when it comes down to the bottom part, where you see it says Dell, right? Because again, we're using a computer monitor in this one. Sometimes this part isn't a straight line. Sometimes it's actually got a little bit of a curve to it. And even though it's got a curve, you want to measure it from the center, the widest point possible. Because again, like I mentioned before, you can adjust the physical picture size to fit the way you cut your monitor bezel, okay? I got lucky. And this particular monitor, it's all the same. All four corners. It's five eighths. So now from here, we're going to go ahead and set up the camera on the tripod and we're going to measure out our 5 eighths and then we'll cut it out and we'll take it from there. So let's go set up and we'll show you what I mean. Alrighty, so you can just barely see it because again we're using a black poster board with a black marker. Well, actually, no, I'm using a red marker. Sorry, my bad. I'm using a red marker. But it's going to show up the same, all right? You can just barely see the lines. This is the back side, by the way. So you're not going to see this through the actual artwork and so on and so forth. I've already marked my 5 eighths marks. So you just go ahead and essentially go from the edge of the line you've created and go 5 eighths in all the way around. Now again, this line you're seeing here, this is the line I talked to you about where you have somebody hold the opposite, opposite side to keep it flush and you make a tracing around your actual monitor, the entire size of the monitor. And then you measure that little bit of bezel that you see inside, like in front of the monitor itself and then you mark inward from these lines, okay? I've already got that done. So now I, I made the little hash marks. What I'm going to do from here, and I'm going to show you on camera, is I'm going to make actual lines. Now don't worry about going beyond these little trace lines, because again, you can't see them. They're on the back side. Basically the part of the game that has all the wiring and the power supply and the game board and so on so you'll never see them until you open up the back of the door and let's be honest who cares if you can see these marked lines so we line this up and we're going to go ahead and just start making our marks okay so let's make this all set up real good Sides, top, and bottom. You want to have it all marked out. I mean, you really don't have to make these lines if you don't want to. I just find them easier so you don't overcut. Because even though I'm overmarking these lines, the last thing you want to do is cut beyond the outside of the monitor's like original silhouette, if you want to call it that. Okay? That's the very last thing you want to do. You want to keep it as close to being inside here as possible. So it looks the best. Now that we have the lines marked, as you can kind of see here, and you can even see up here how I went beyond everything. Again, you don't have to do that. You could try to make it right on the money if you want to, but who cares? I mean, really, who cares? So... We'll put our straight edge on one of our lines, and this is when you want to be a little precise. So, you set it up on your cut line, and you want to take a razor blade knife, okay? Something super sharp, and you're going to very carefully go from corner to corner. You don't want to just go woof and cut right through. That would not work out in your favor. Okay, so here we go. We'll go ahead and we'll set it right against the edge of the straight edge, whichever you use. I'm using a, uh, a yardstick. And we're going to follow that line. Put a fair amount of pressure so you make sure you're cutting right through that poster board, okay? 
the cr more crisp your line can be, the better. Does it have to be perfect? No. But let's just try our best. Okay, there's our first cut. And we'll continue from there. And if you can't tell, I actually have a piece of cardboard below this. So I don't accidentally cut into my tabletop. Or in this case, I'm using my, co uh, my cocktail uh, centipede game. I don't want to cut into the glass. So I put a piece of cardboard below that so I prevent that from happening. So just think about stuff like that. If you have a cutting board... Like, you know, for sewing or whatever. Then who cares? Just cut it. But I don't. And just remember, when you do your cuts, you want to remember to remove and replace your hands so that uh, you can keep pressure on whatever straight edge you decide to use to make these cuts happen. Okay? So I'll kind of give you an example with this top one here. I get it lined up with my lines and I'll spread my hand out putting a lot of downward pressure on my straight edge and of course keeping my fingers away from the edge so if I slip I hopefully don't cut myself you may still if you slip but you know try to give yourself the benefit of the doubt so we'll follow the edge once it gets slightly past our thumb or whatever our farthest away point is We'll hold it all down and move our hand over and then continue our cut. Just like so. Now, I've got all of it done. We'll see how well we did. Put a little pressure down and look at that. There it is. It's been cut out. Pretty sweet, huh? All right. Let's go ahead and put that back in the arcade game, and we'll see how well we did. Okay, so we cut out our screen size, and as you can see, it's not exactly perfect perfect, but it's pretty dang close. I'm talking so close that once I put the artwork bezel in place, you're never going to notice it. I promise you, you're not. You know, it, it's better to go over, like you see right here, where you still see some of that black plastic bezel, than it is to go over the screen, alright? It's much easier to adjust. Uh, I haven't stapled or nailed this in place at all. The only thing I've done is I put a little bit of double-sided tape on the edges of these to kind of attach it to the monitor bezel a little bit. But that's about it. And again, like I said, it's not perfect. You can see it right there. It's not perfect, but it's so dang close that in all reality, it doesn't matter. It's going to work out just fine. So I'm happy with this. Again, I still have to nail or double side tape or something like that, the sides here, so that it just kind of holds in place. And that will also take away some of this bulgingness, like you see right here. Once I staple this in, it's going to be nice and taut against the monitor bezel. I'm not going to do this in this video just because, you know, there's so many different ways you can do it. And it really doesn't matter. It's all going to come out to be the same. So, that's how you make your very own makeshift monitor bezel. Again, this is a bezel that's not an artwork style, okay? It's just the black piece that goes around the monitor itself all right most games are going to be plastic there are some that have cardboard or tag board or poster board styles and this works just fine as it is so here's how you can make your very own so you don't have to worry about trying to spend extra money just go spend the 95 cents to buy one of these poster boards do some measurements cut it out yourself and boom, there you go. You're all set and ready to go. Alright guys, well I appreciate you watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one, okay? Have a good one now.